name is Sarah Bowling, and I was raised in a charismatic home. My father was a pastor. My mom teaches the Bible still. My dad died recently, but I was raised in the charismatic renewal, and that's the pretty much like people would say the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in denominational churches. So our church was very, very uh, central in that whole experience, and our church grew from that. Um, so and the charismatic idea was the sense of the Holy Spirit being alive and active and present now, today, and, and in our world. So that's kind of some of my background as it relates specifically to the Holy Spirit and a little bit of my upbringing. I wrote this book, Heavenly Help, and I love, oh my goodness, I love this book. The reason I love this book is because growing up in a charismatic home and in a charismatic church, um, I was frequently taught about the Holy Spirit and in great ways, phenomenal ways. And, and what I came to know about the Holy Spirit from my upbringing had a lot in some respects to do with the power of God. You know, this is an extension cord and seeing the power of the Holy Spirit move and, and do things and be active and present. And I learned a lot about the day of Pentecost and, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through the book of Acts and, you know, into the gifts of the Holy Spirit, read about it in Paul's epistles. But when I started studying John, I started studying the book of John chapters 14 through 16, actually including 17. And I came to the realization, it was a real, like a light went off for me. Somebody turned the light on that Jesus basically in these chapters gives an introduction, like a primer, who's the Holy Spirit. And all growing up and in my up upbringing with Sunday school and everything, I always had this idea that the Holy Spirit was more like an extension cord. Totally understood the Holy Spirit's a third person of the Trinity. I get that. But I never really understood or had some sense of who's the Holy Spirit as a person. And so when Jesus starts to speak to his, his disciples, his 11 closest followers, the night that he's betrayed, it's the Last Supper. He says, I will send you another helper. And when I started studying this, I did this study for, I don't know, three to four, maybe five years through these chapters. And it just completely took my breath away. When the Holy Spirit came, the disciples weren't like freaked out because Jesus had already kind of prepped them and taught them, educated them and brought them up to speed. So there wasn't kind of like this, you know, lose the plot, freak and jump out the window kind of idea, but more so, hey, this is, a, this is another helper. So when I started teaching this, it just took my breath away and really moved the Holy Spirit out of just kind of an ethereal concept or, you know, an extension cord for power into more of a deep connection, a deep relationship, a deep intimate personal engagement with the helper. Um, and not even so much theologically and kind of esoterically and theoretically, but more so into just my daily living. And so out of that experience of teaching through that, I wrote this book. Um, and I believe this book is completely revolutionary.